Hey, it's Kim Commando today, your daily podcast to keep you up to date with all things digital and beyond. And I'd love to have you be a part of our podcast. You can make an appointment to speak with me. Just head over to commando.com and on the top right, there's a button that says email Kim, fill that out and that's it. All right, I have to ask you something. How many tabs do you have open on your browser right this very moment? Okay, we all multitask and we feel like we're getting a lot done, but a recent study from Microsoft showed that having a bunch of tabs open doesn't actually improve our work. In fact, it just stresses us out and makes us feel super scattered. So now there's a new browser app called Sidekick, and it's designed to eliminate distractions and help you focus. They say it's for anybody who has ADHD. It's three times faster than Chrome, blocks ads and trackers, and cleans up all that tab clutter. So if you're someone who struggles with concentration and needs help staying on task, you should give Sidekick a little try. I mean, I don't know. I think I have OCD and ADHD. So everything has to be perfect, but not for very long. Yes. And on that happy note, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this. It's America's largest show about all things digital, your most trusted source. I'm, of course, America's beloved digital goddess, Kim Commando, here with you once again. We're so glad that you're joining us to get more tech smarts because... Every single thing is a tech thing nowadays, isn't it? And you can find us on over 420 top stations throughout the United States. We're streaming in your favorite radio app, and you can always find us as a commercial-free podcast and webcast over at commando.com. And I'd also like to give a special shout-out to all of our listeners on the American Forces Network Radio, serving more than 375,000 American servicemen and women in the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marine Corps, the Coast Guard, and the Space Force in 175 different countries. And of course, I'm here to answer your questions on our T-Mobile Unlimited listener line, and that's one 825 5254 is the way to join us. All right, every single day, I check out at least 30 different websites to make sure that we're both up to date on all things digital. So you don't have to go out there and read all that. I do all the hard work for you. So let's talk about five things you need to know right now. And we're going to start with the electric Ford F-150 Lightning. <laughs> I have a new name for it, the Ford Fuego. Why? Because it can literally burn up and explode just sitting in a parking lot. It happened. Last February, this electric Ford 150 burst into flames in a lot in Dearborn, Michigan. But we're only hearing about it now. Why? Because CNBC got their hands on the information through the Freedom of Information Act. The video is insane. We have it up on uh, commando.com. I mean, that Ford 150 is just toast. Now, the cause of the fire, they say, was the vehicle's Korean-produced lithium-ion battery. And let me tell you, once one of those bad boys sets ablaze, it's so incredibly difficult to put out because it creates something called thermal runaway. Remember, that thermal runaway. Now, that's when a battery starts to heat up uncontrollably, and you cannot put it out with any water. The fire just won't go out. You need some highly trained firefighters to come in and stop it. Same reason why all these e-bikes are now exploding. So Ford did respond. They halted production of the EV F-150 for a total of five weeks. And I know that there's a huge push to get everybody into an EV, but I really think we need to get our arms around you know, these batteries and these fires and how do we actually pre pre prevent them. I mean, the EV owners and manufacturers saying, do not charge your cars inside your garage. Do only do it outside your house. And nobody's really doing that. All right, number two, I just knew this product was going to be dead on arrival for Amazon. I'm talking about their Halo devices. They are these wearable fitness trackers with a subscription that give health insights. I shouldn't say are, more like were. Now, if you bought one, bad news, they're now completely useless. That's right, Amazon's Halo subscription service and device is no longer active, which basically you have a useless band, and Amazon is not offering you any type of credit or no refunds. And this comes at the same time that Amazon says we have our biggest layoff period ever. Uh, Amazon laid off 18,000 folks in the last year, and in March they said they're going to lay off another 9,000. But I don't know if you saw the numbers, Amazon... $3 billion in profit in Q1. Wow. Okay. You know, I think they're smarter than Zuckerberg going all in on the metaverse, which uh, guess how much he lost on the metaverse last year? $4 billion. Wow. Which leads us to number three, VR and the metaverse. Now, the Apple VR headset's been talked about for years. It's going to be coming out in June at the WWDC. That's the Worldwide Developers Conference that they have every single year. 
It's probably going to cost about three grand. And so that is really expensive as compared to Meta's Oculus. But so what is the VR headset going to have from Apple? Well, it's going to have iPad apps. It says primarily books, camera, FaceTime maps, messages. Uh, then, of course, it's going to run hundreds of thousands of third-party iPad apps that are available right now in the Apple Store. Um, one thing it does have going for it, it's not clunky. If you look at some of the rumored pictures of it, uh, it has an external battery. It's sleek and modern. It looks like the MagSafe battery pack. And then plus it's going to be charged by a standard USB-C cable. Finally, we don't have to buy any more new Apple chargers and cords whenever they come out with a new device. Yikes. Uh, number four on our list of five things that was really interesting to me, and I think it will be for you too, because when you start looking at all of today's modern cars, what do they have when you, when you sit down? Right? They have that big infotainment display. And you're like, oh, and then you have to control it with a knob, or maybe you're lucky enough to have a touchscreen. Well, back in 2013, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration published guidelines for these infotainment displays. And they recommended that drivers should be able to complete any task on that huge display with glances of under two seconds for a maximum of 12 seconds. Now, think about this. You know, as well as I do, that these infotainment displays, you're going to look at it longer than two seconds. So guess what's happening now? We're going old school. These car manufacturers are saying, all right, we have this touchscreen TV in front of the drivers and people are complaining about it. So they're bringing back the buttons. <laughs> That's right, the knobs, everything that we had before. As a matter of fact, uh, Porsche is the first one leading the charge to bring back the buttons on the interior with the 2024 Cayenne. And this, this coming in last at number five, there's a new dating trend worse than getting ghosted, right? You know what ghosted is. That's where like people just disappear and you don't hear from them again. Well, the new dating trend is called zombieing, okay, zombieing. That's when someone disappears on you for a while and then suddenly rises up from the dead to hit you up again, right? We're talking about AI romances and all these other scams, and now we have zombieing that are is ha actually happening. So the AI bots are also getting involved in dating, and that's where you think that you're talking to a real person, but it's actually a robot pretending to be a supermodel. So if you ever see a note from a supermodel in your DMs, just know that, I'm sorry, I know you're good looking and you're hot and you're wealthy and you have a great house and a sports car, and you're just a real dynamo and love and life and business. But it's probably just an AI bot because they are taking over. And Tinder says, God, we have so many of them, we have to get better at identifying and verifying people. So now if you're on Tinder, you can up your verification game with something called video selfies. That's right. So this way you can prove that you're not a robot. Now, Hinge was actually ahead of the game on this one. They put the video selfie in place last year because of all the romance scams. So if you're verified on Tinder, congrats. You have a photo verified cutie on your profile. And if you're not, you better go get one. All right, coming up, we have our trivia question of the week. Wow, this one's pretty tough, but I think you may be able to get it. In our money tip, we have the best and the worst jobs for 2023 if you want to work from home. And then later on, sneaky ways to read a text without the other person knowing. And we have all of your great phone calls. And you have me, Kim Commander. Hey, our T-Mobile Unlimited listener line is now open at one 825 5254 is the way to join us. And again, you can always send me your question on the website. That's commando.com. In the upper right-hand corner, there's a link that says email Kim. So when I read about these two adventurous grandmothers, I decided, oh my gosh, I want to be like Ellie and Sandy one day. Because as you know, I'm an avid traveler, but they're traveling around the world at 80 years old. That's right. They celebrated their 80th birthdays by traveling around the world in just 80 days. Isn't that amazing? From Antarctica to Africa to Rome, they they packed in this whole tour of the globe all while keeping this lean and well thought out budget, right? And during their journey, get this, they rode a sleigh pulled by Huskies in Finland. Okay, they are adventurous. They flew high in a hot air balloon in Egypt. They even weathered a rocky ship ride across the notorious rough Drake Passage. Now, along the way, 
they have created this amazing following on social media, on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and they're planning their next adventure for when they're 84 in 2024. So Ellie and Sandy, it's a pleasure to have you. What inspired the two of you to say, hey, on our 80th, we're going around the world in 80 days. Where did this idea come from? Well, a few years ago, in anticipation of turning 80, wouldn't it be fun to go around the world in 80 days at age 80? Well, Ellie's eyes got big and she said, of course. Yes. <laughs> well, so we had all of our tickets purchased, everything mm -hmm. planned, and COVID shut it down. Oh. But COVID didn't shut us down. So we went this year and our new theme was around the world in 80 days at, at 81, 81 and still, still on the run. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So, <laughs> wow. So you went to so many different places. How many different countries did you hit? We did 18 different countries and the Antarctica because it's not a country. All seven continents, 18 countries, and eight world, world wonders. wonders. That was more than Phileas Fogg went to on his round the world trip. Wow. Um, gosh, how did you plan for such an event? Well, we did it all. We did it. We planned everything ourselves. We planned every flight, every hotel, every little side trip, whatever we were going to do, like snorkeling in the Great Barrier Reef and things like that. We planned it all. So we were responsible if it failed, then we get the credit if it works. So and it worked perfectly. Yeah. And they offer a one around the world ticket and it offers you six continents and 16 flights. And so we, ha and you have to circumnavigate the world in one direction. So we figured out all our flights, turned it in and said, this, will this meet your approval and your requirements? And it did, and we got our ticket that way. It was just a set fare. It didn't so, matter where we went. It was just a matter of you got, oh. you paid a set price and you went wherever you wanted to go. And so then from there, <clears throat> once we had that itinerary made, then we looked once, we could see where we were landing on a continent or in a country, and we we wanted to see other things within that continent or country. Then we booked other flights, either using our airline miles that we had saved up, or sometimes we had to pay for a flight, actually purchase a flight. Our average hotel room was twenty nine dollars a person per night, and we wow, did that's, go that's incredible thirteen dollars and fifty cents. That was our cheapest one in Cairo, Egypt, with a million dollar view. <laughs> What was what was the most memorable experience of the trip? For me, being where the northern lights were and getting to see the northern lights, wow, that was quite the memorable experience. And this was Sandy talking, and now I'll let Ellie talk. And as far as an experience go, we did the happy swing in Bali. Now, we were just going up the mountain in a car. We had a car and a driver, and, and we just go past the sign that says happy swing. We thought, oh, well, let's just go mm -hmm. check that out. Well, that was just the most fun. We get up there. There's no tourists there. It's just four workers, and it's a, oh, a tall cliff, hundreds, of, I mean, probably 200 feet, 300 feet below to the rice paddies, and they have these clever swings and you just swing out in them and they made us they had us put on these silly red dresses which we loved i mean we didn't love but we loved them after the fact it was cute and then we swam we were in one swing together then i went swinging on my own a little more adventuresome and they said oh let loose of the of the rope which i did and uh <laughs> anyway it was it was just just a spur of the moment fun thing we never knew even existed and it was uh, quite fun to do that. And uh, Gosh, Kim, this is Sandy yeah. again. If I may share with you, Ellie also on this trip <laughs> went snorkeling in the Great Barrier Reef while I sat on the boat and took pictures. Thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> and then Ellie also in Australia at the reptile farm allowed a python to wrap itself around her oh. body well i once again yeah. sat in the audience and took pictures <laughs> it was a very uh, interesting experience it got a, it got a little bit too tight but uh, uh i made it so what advice yeah. would you have for somebody who's listening right now and they may be thinking to themselves i'm just too old to do anything like this what would you tell them all right 
My <laughs> advice, this is Sandy, and my advice is get out of your easy chair. Step out of your comfort zone. Make some plans and live because age is only a number. So the next trip adventure is 2024 I, next I, year. And how is it going to compare to this past trip? Well, next year in 2024, we will be 82 years of age. And so our new theme will be, we are 82 and, and travel, travel we, we can, can do. do. So we are going to go back to the continent of South America and uh, we're going to see as many world wonders as South America has to offer and mm -hmm. everything else that we can possibly tour in South America. Hey, Ellie and Sandy, thank you so much uh, for sharing your story with us. You guys are amazing. I can't wait to talk to you this time next year. Thank you. We enjoyed talking with you. Thank you. I definitely want to go on a trip with those two young ladies. All right. Do you want to hang a picture? Now, hanging one is easy, but what if you have three, four, or five or more pictures with two hooks on the back and you want them exactly five and a half inches apart on the wall? That's when it's time to get out math. Mm-mm-mm. Not at all. There's an app for that. It's called Hang a Pick. You just go ahead and take pictures of where you're, of what you want to hang on the wall and where you want to put it. We'll tell you exactly where to do it. Now, your iPhone has a level tool, too. It's called the Measure app. Now, if you're on Android, just open the Google app or your browser and search for a bubble level. But if you are hanging a whole bunch of pictures, get that app called Hang a Pick. All right, our trivia question of the week is coming up. You don't want to miss. It's here on Kim Commando Today. Get your brain cells ready for an epic challenge here with Commanding the Tech World Trivia. Now, this isn't your grandma's bingo night. Okay, these are brain-busting questions. That we're going to put that noggin to the test. Now, to add to the excitement, we have a special guest ready and willing to take on this challenge because he wants the grand prize. You know what it is? A Kim Commando Show official fanny pack. That's just priceless. And a free bag of Dr. Marty's Nature's Blend dog food, a value of $59.95. And joining us this week is David in Birmingham, Alabama. Hello there, David. Hello, Kim. So what do you do there in Birmingham? I actually work security at the airport for TSA. Oh, nice. So what is something interesting that you've confiscated lately? Just your, your average... Uh, Cast iron frying pan is not allowed in the cabin with you. You know, like, you know, you can. You mean I, somebody in so the when I travel, that. like, when I travel, I can't take my personal cast iron frying pan. Are you sure? I, okay, I'm that's positive. Sure. <laughs> All right. So, uh, listen. So the the trivia question today. I'm going to give you four options. Okay. Do you like pizza? Okay. Oh, I love pizza. Okay, well, in 2017, Pizza Hut decided that they wanted to up their game. And they said, you know, we need to innovate. We need to attract new customers. So which of the following ideas did they actually implement? Was it A, pizza making robots, B, pizza delivery by drone, C, pizza ordering sneakers, or D, pizza vending machines? So was it... Uh, a is the pizza making robots, B, pizza delivery by drone, C, the uh, pizza ordering sneakers, or D, the pizza vending machines. So which one do you think is the true answer? And again, you're going for a big prize. I know the pressure's on, but what do you think, David? I'm going, I think I kind of remember something about this. I'm going to say the sneakers. The pizza ordering sneakers. All right. Final answer? The final answer. Okay, let's see what the judges say. Is David right or wrong? <laughs> yes, you won. Oh All right. So for everybody who didn't know, and that was really good, they called them pie tops. So you could order pizza with just a press of the button on the tongue of the shoe. They were released to coincide with the NCAA basketball tournament, and they had two colors. They were available in red, which was for pepperoni, right, or wheat colored, which was the veggie pizza, and they had a Bluetooth connection in the sneaker to your phone. So that's how you did it. You know, it just reminds me, when Ian, my son, was about 10, 
I thought I would teach him a lesson about life, David. And so I said, okay, so here's the deal is I want you to tell me which movie that you'd like to watch tonight and which pizza you'd like to order. And now he's, you know, 20 something. He just told me like, this was like a traumatic experience in his life. So, (laughs) so, and then, and so after he told me, I don't remember what the movie was or the pizza, I looked at him and I said, well, here's the deal. I get to pick the movie and I get to pick the pizza because I have the money. So and he's like, what <laughs> was that? that Crazy. Is true. It is true. So how can I help you out today, sir? So in 2019, I bought a new house, moved nine miles from my current house to a internet desert. <laughs> Nothing. I had a MiFi that had one bar on it, and I'd have to stand in a chair and hold it to be able to log on to pay bills. After several years, somebody finally built a tower, and I've got a Nighthawk LTE mobile hotspot router now that receives 5G and Ooh, nice. 4G with five nice. bars. It, the the range on it, it, the media room is about the range on it. And I was wanting to extend my property to some other buildings and possibly other rooms in the house. It has a Cat5 plug-in and a USB plug-in on the back, and I was wondering, is there a way to hook a router to this thing to extend this router? See, you know, that's what happens to us, David. You know, you get, you, you mean, you went from no internet to having great internet. And now it's like, well, now I can make, now I want an even better internet, right? It's like, yes. okay. <laughs> I don't, and, and before you were just like, like you said, like standing on a chair or holding, trying to get one bar. <laughs> okay. Just but yeah, one I, bar, totally, please. <laughs> <laughs> I totally, I totally get it. Um, okay. Here's what basically you need to do is you can extend it and you can do this by adding a, a mesh network router uh, and that will connect to the at t what did you say, a Nighthawk, Netgear or Nighthawk router? Is that what you have? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Um, and to set up the secondary router, what you're going to do is like you connect that, as you said, to the Ethernet port. But the second router has to be set up on what's called bridge mode. And so what that means is that it's going to act as a wire, as a Wi-Fi access point, and then that's going to extend the coverage of the primary router. Okay, makes sense. Yes, it does. Okay, and so uh, now keep in mind, there's always the strength of the signal, the quality, the distance between the devices, and you know all that other good stuff. Disclaimers, but just know that once you do that, you could also put some other things on that network if you wanted, such as like some maybe some wireless cameras. Uh, but again, you're just going to buy a secondary router. I like Eero Mesh. Uh, I think they're really good. I think I like the technology. I have them uh, in several places. And again, the only thing you want to remember is that when you do set up that second router, just remember bridge mode, bridge mode, uh, because this way you're not going to have two routers conflicting with the addresses. And so the other one's just going to act as okay. a Wi-Fi access point. And then again, just extend that coverage of the primary router. And of course, you know, now you'll have internet on all this entire big property. And then you'll be like, next you're gonna call me and say, okay, but now what I want, Kim, is what? <laughs> I've been racking be- my brain and I'm like, duh, call Kim. You've been listening to her forever. <laughs> call Kim, she knows what you need to do. Well, perfect. So uh, thank you for your confidence, David, and congrats on the big win. And we're going to send you out an official Kim Commando Show fanny pack. And don't forget you get that uh, free bag at Dr. Marty's Pets Nature's Blend Dog Food, a value of $59.95. And, of course, as I said, that fanny pack's just priceless. And, again, David, thank you for your call. And thanks for playing. All right. According to a study by Upwork, I thought this was really surprising. A full 39% of the U.S. workforce performed some type of freelance work last year. So FlexJobs analyzed about 58,000 companies, wow, across 50 career categories and their job posting and their histories all of last year. So here are the results. The top five job categories that saw significant growth, communications, bookkeeping, graphic design, accounting, finance, marketing. So these are the categories that's growing for work from home. Now, these are the categories that are declining in work from home. Education and training, customer service, medical and health, HR recruiting, and project management. So what companies are offering the most remote freelance jobs? Now, you don't ever want to just put this into Google. That's why we put together the most popular remote job titles, like executive assistant, recruiter, customer service rep, 
uh, social media manager, payroll specialist, project manager. And we have links to open roles and companies that I mentioned, along with a lot of great resources that you can use to tell if a job offer is legit or not. And, you know, if you're ever in doubt, just drop me an email and I'm always happy to help you out. So this is a fabulous money tip you need to take a look at and share with somebody who you know that wants to work from home or just get a side gig and head over to commando.com and hit that link that says Kim Show and it'll be right there front and center. All right, still to come, we have more of your phone calls as well as sneaky ways to read a message without the other person ever knowing it. It's here on Kim Commando Today. Michelle in Louisville, Kentucky. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Kim. How are you? Good. What's going on? Well, I tell you what, I've been having a heck of a time for since we bought our house in 2020. It okay. started in about, and we bought the house in August, started in October. We got rid of it last January. Well, it's come back. Someone's getting into our Wi-Fi, and they're getting into all of our devices and all of our email accounts. I mean, I, I can't keep an Apple ID. If they're they actually if they're doing a SIM swap, somebody said possibly. So mm-hmm. I don't. I need help. I need help. I can't find anyone to get this evidence off of the device to go to the police. Well, you can go to the police right now, and you can bring them their phone, and you can tell them with a list of you know everything that that has gone. They, uh, yeah. Why you think somebody's in? Well, why do you think somebody's in your system and do in your <laughs> phone and taking well, over your phone is, and okay. This is a good example. Like, I can change my password for my uh, Apple ID. And okay. then I can go to sign in to get something from the app store. And my password's already been changed again. And that's, you know, with me doing double checking, doing my due diligence, make sure I didn't hit anything wrong. And then sometimes I'll have about, I don't know, 50, 60% battery. Then all of a sudden, it, my phone will just die. Sometimes I pick it up when I haven't even been on it, and it's hot. We also have all of this hotspot data that's been used, and we don't Mm -hmm. use hotspot at all. And then we have strange numbers on our call history and our text history that we get with our statements. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's weird. So, yeah. So actually, the Apple ID I have have right now, I didn't make. Well, so let me ask you a question. So have have you called the carrier? I've called everyone. I mean, you. I, this is this is taking over my life. It's destroyed my life for three years. It's no joke. And uh, it's been, a, yeah, I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. I've called everybody. I can't keep an email. I can't keep a phone. I still owe $600 on the phone I'm holding, and it's no good anymore. Once they get into the phone, they're, the device, they're in it. Michelle, have you tried to do a factory reset on the phone? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> And wiped everything off of it? No. Okay. Yeah, I mean, so, we've got uh, identity theft and, like, loans, and we got other stuff attached to all this. Mm-hmm. Where they were in our cameras, and, and they were turn, controlling our lights, turning them on and off, watching us in our cameras, listening to us on the Alexis. You know, and all those accounts, they just take over them and kick us out. So... Uh, the router that you had in the house... Did you take the router with you to did you take the did you take the router with you? No, I didn't take the router to the police. I took the router back to the provider and got a new one. Okay. So you got a brand new router. And then you did you change the password on that router? Yeah, but the thing is they're they've gotten into our spectrum app because all that stuff is on my phone. So I don't like things keep getting changed that I didn't change. So you keep going back to the phone. So you so it's really the phone that's that's causing a lot of issues. Well, the Wi-Fi and the, I think helped them get in the phone, and then also they wiped out my computer, my uh, second computer. They wiped out. It's yeah. Okay. School and work um, accounts I have set up everywhere that I've never set up. Okay, so you know it's it's so here's what you need to do. You need to number one document everything that that is happening. So you have a whole list. And if you can have screenshots or videos of people changing accounts. So what you need, what I would like you to do is to start, you know, putting together documentation on what's going on. 
Okay. Yeah, Make I it have. unemotional, even though there's a lot of stuff. And then you need to take all this documentation because it's, it's like you said, it's happening at the carrier, the Wi-Fi, the hotspot, whatever it is. You need to take that down to the carrier, okay, and say this is what's happening and ask them to give you a brand new phone, just a brand new phone and change. And you want a brand new account, a brand new email address, Start scratch. Pretend you're just brand new. All this has never happened. Okay. And in that router that you have at your house, I want to make sure that you also change that password there. And make sure you set up two-factor authentication on all your accounts. Every single one. I know it's a real pain in the neck. It is. But that's what you need to do. And if your phone's hot and they're, they're blowing through the data, that's a big sign that you might have some malware on that phone. And so that's why I recommend that you take the phone to the carrier. It's like you said, somebody mentioned a SIM swap, and you know, that could be happening. could be happening right now. And so that's why I'm going to keep pointing you back to that carrier and, and stress to them that you need a new phone. If you have, might have talked to a manager and you need new accounts and set up two-factor authentication because I want to make sure that everything's going to be safe there. And, and I think that's where I think your, your next stop really needs to be the carrier. And I think they're going to be the ones who can help you best. And Michelle, thank you for your call. So many people think that they're being stalked. Wow. It's just, you know, I wish there was a study about that. How many people really think this is happening to them? And how many people it is really happening to? That would be the, the real stat I'd like to look at. So you received a text message. And for whatever the reason, you don't want the person who sent the message to know that you've read it. Okay. The first option is to enable notifications on your phone. This way, when a message comes in, you'll see the entire message on your phone's home screen or just enough so you know what it's about. Now, another trick is when that you see when a message has arrived, but you don't want the other person to know that you read it. You can do two things. Number one, immediately put your phone in airplane mode and then turn off Wi-Fi. This cuts off the internet totally from your phone, so you can still look at the message, but there's no way for that read receipt to be sent. And whatever messaging app that you're using, I always make sure that the option called Read Receipts is off. Now it's just like, I don't know, why do they need to know when I actually read it? Hey, do me a huge favor and tell at least three friends about the Kim Commando Show and the Kim Commando Today podcast because everyone needs more tech smarts. Knowledge is power. And you can find me always at the website. That's commando.com. This program is a copyrighted production of Westar Multimedia Entertainment and protected by the copyright laws. Any rebroadcast or use of this program for commercial, business, economic, or financial purposes without the written permission of Westar Multimedia Entertainment is strictly prohibited.